everyone welcome back to another video today i'm going to be talking about the hurricane season once again um arctic blast and other videos relating upcoming weather will be delayed to later tomorrow due to the fact that you guys love these hurricane season videos i'm going to be focusing mainly on activity today but later in the video i will go into landfalls so without further ado let's get started so i showed you the enso in yesterday's video uh, the link will be in the description for my youtube video from yesterday and so in the description if um, that mainly goes into landfalls, but also activity. If you haven't watched that, please go look at that. But I showed you in the video yesterday that the ENSO phase was around negative 0 0.017, negative 0 0.020 around there, meaning, or negative 0 0.02. Basically meaning we're heading into a positive neutral soon, but, and that, and neutrals do help hurricane seasons, but it's really a 50-50 chance depending on other factors, which we'll go into later. And even if we're in an El Nino, factors indicate we will have an above average season. Now, of course, sorry if I'm talking too fast and mess up with my words. I'm trying my best. Um, just sometimes I talk fast unknowingly, but I don't forget I'm making a video. But, you know, hopefully you guys can understand me and sorry for any background noise. But moving on, we do see that around the JAS period, an El Nino comes into an effect um, now, what this can mean is, of course, warming in the Eastern Pacific does not help the Atlantic, but I do think we could see an above average season, and that's what factors are indicating. So we're going to go into the CFS model. So and we're not going to be looking at canned SIPs because that's around two weeks old and they only update once a month. And we are not going to be looking at NMME. That's fairly new to the website, so it might not be the most accurate. And I am not going to look at the exact end, so I just told you um, uh, in the yesterday's video. Like I said, please go watch that if you haven't. But we let's go into the three months to, short, uh, to go so more into detail. So we're going to look at the JJA period. So the beginning of the hurricane season, the Southern Caribbean is average, but most systems go through the Northern Caribbean and Central Caribbean. And off the coast of New England, we're really having below average temperatures there. But above average sea surface temperatures for most of the region. And if we look at the um, oh no, JAS period um, into the peak of the season, we do see the same thing. Much of the Atlantic above average. And even with below average temperatures in the mid-Atlantic, we are definitely going to see um, potentially that as a hot spot. August, September, October, the peak. Below average um, temperatures for parts of the Southern Caribbean, but definitely above average sea surface temperatures for the rest. And then and at the end of the season, September, October, November, Pretty much the same story. And if we, now we're going to, oops, sorry about that. Now we're going to go into, oops, sorry. Now we're going to go into the upper dynamics here. And we're going to be looking at the shear anomaly. The three months averages we're going to look at. Uh, we do see above average shear for the MDR. But if we go into the beginning of the hurricane season, we do see the MDR is having above average shear along with the Southern Caribbean. But the Gulf of Mexico and by the Bahamas, where I think a lot of systems are going to go through, we have below average shear, meaning systems could easily strengthen and pose a threat to the United States. And if we continue that into the middle of the season, we see shear um, enhances in the Southern Caribbean. But of course, if systems go through the Northern Caribbean, they shouldn't have much of a problem. And shear comes down to the MDR. And Towards the latter half of the season, and shear increases in the MDR, but overall in the Atlantic decreases. So if systems um, head in the northern MDR and around the Cabo Verde Islands and stay tracking due west, sorry, and they try to avoid the shear, they could definitely strengthen easily and pose a threat to the Caribbean and the United States. And this shear... Of course, this shear isn't constant, so the Central Caribbean also isn't being affected too much by shear, so systems could easily strengthen there. And, of course, at the end of the season, that's out of season ra seasonal ranges. If we go to this, now we're going to go into tracks to see where systems could go. So we saw how we could have an above-average season, which uh, numbers I'll do in a couple weeks to a month or two. My first official numbers. So, but we do see here that um we're gonna go a little bit into tracks here landfalls 
So if we go into JIS period, actually JJA period, which these are the the letters for the months, we do see much of below average, but due to above average activity off the east coast of more precipitation i mean we could do we could see a bigger threat to the southeast and eastern gulf and the caribbean as well and if we go into later in the season we are seeing below average precipitation for much of the atlantic oh no i accidentally went back there that's why but yeah below average activity for much of the atlantic and that stays the same pretty much until we get into later in the season, around October, we see much of the Gulf. So systems could go into the Gulf and pose a threat to the Northern Gulf, as well as the Western Gulf, Eastern Gulf, and Southeastern Coast. So those are going to be the main regions here to watch out for landfalls. And we do have to watch out for those regions. And then again, precipitation isn't the most accurate parameter, but we can definitely see based on it. And like I said, CANSIP is outdated, but we can see where the systems could go. So the Gulf and Southeastern Coast, as well as the Caribbean, definitely has to watch out there. And the next parameter I'm gonna look at is, here we go, the high pressure, which, um, if systems form in the Caribbean, they shouldn't be affected too much, but systems will definitely be pushed west with a large 1,024, 1,025 millibar system, especially near the peak of the season. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry for any times I messed up on talking for talking a little too fast. Um, just I'm used to that while not on the video. Sorry for any mess ups. And, um... This video was around medium lengths, maybe a little quicker. Anyway, any suggestions, please leave in the comments. Um, and upcoming weather videos, about upcoming weather, I mean, are later tonight or tomorrow. And, of course, I posted another hurricane video, like I said, because you guys love this. Any suggestions, please leave it in the comments. Sorry for any background noise. Anyway.